Welcome back to the channel. This week, I realized I had never done a follow-up video on the Texas road trip. Um, I showed a lot of facts and information about the trip, talked a little bit about writing from Hertz, but I didn't really go into how much did it cost for us to charge for this entire trip uh, and compared to gas, what would it have cost for gas? Now, keep in mind, this was a year ago, basically this week, uh, we started the trip. So gas was about a buck more, a gallon more expensive. Um, at Hertz had just started renting cars in the Dallas area, so it was a little more pricey to rent cars. But we'll get to that at the end. We'll talk a little bit about what it was then versus now and break all those costs down. So let me start off with the actual charging. The first thing I did is I kept track, as you can see on the screen, of all of the charging that we done on that road trip. Um, I kept track of the date, the location, the percentage we charged, the state of charge, the cost, and the type of charging that we did. Some of it was superchargers, uh, some destination chargers were in there, and then with some just straight G1772 um, level two charging we did at like hotels and some shopping center. As you can see, we had 1,704 total miles on the trip. And it's got every single charging session. The total cost to charge was $230.61 for that two week, almost two week period. Um, the next thing I did is I said, okay, that's how much it costs for us to charge. What would it have cost if we would have had a different car, not a Tesla? So I went ahead and went on the Hertz website and I took a look at the different types of cars are available. As you can see on the screen now, uh, there's a bunch of different types of cars that we had available to us, uh, but obviously we chose the Tesla, and it lists the miles per gallon for a lot of those cars. Now, I'm not sure how accurate um, Hertz's miles per gallon are, but I used that as a basis for the following spreadsheet, where I actually broke down how much it was for each one of those charging sessions. So I put three different vehicles down. Um, not sure what we would have chosen if we didn't have a Tesla. Um, a Chevy Equinox is a midsize SUV. A Nissan Rogue is a small SUV, and then a Chevy Malibu, which is a mid-sized car. Probably wouldn't have chosen the Nissan Rogue because um, I'm tall, I'm 6'4", my son is tall, he's about 6 foot. I don't know that we would have been comfortable in the Nissan Rogue with the two of us and all of the luggage that we had. So we probably would have gone with the Chevy Equinox. Um, as you can see, there is the miles per gallon per the Hertz website. Uh, there was 1,704 total miles. According to the, the website, government website, the EIA.gov website, cost for a gallon of gas back in June, June, late June of 2022 was $4.51 and early July, $4.32. I went ahead and kind of went on the low side and averaged that out and came up with a cost of $4.34. So, you know, nowadays it's probably a buck cheaper a gallon, but this is comparing what was back then. So if you look, at the, uh, the Chevy Equinox. So if I took the total um, miles we drove, 1,704 miles, and I used the Chevy Equinox divided by 21 miles per gallon, multiply that, that's, that's 81 gallons, multiply that by the cost per gallon back then, that would have cost us $352.15. The Tesla cost us $230.61, so really we saved about $121 in gas using uh, the Tesla and the charging and benefiting from the free charging where we did versus paying for gas. The Nissan Rogue would have cost us less. Again, I don't know I would have rented that because of the size. It would have been 68 gallons, a cost of $295.81, which would save us about $65 having a Tesla versus gas. And the Chevy Malibu would have cost us about $158 more than the Model Y. So all in all, it did save us money on gas. Um, a lot of that was because of the free charging we were able to utilize. Um, and again, I don't know what that would be today based on, based on the cost per gallon of gas today and based on the charging today in Texas. Now, here comes the interesting part. So uh, again, when you look at this screen here at listing the cars from Hertz, you can see that the Tesla was considerably more expensive than the Model Y. Let me pull that up for you right now. So as you can see on the screen right now, uh, the Model Y cost us quite a bit more. It cost us $1,500 for that period of time. Now, the Nissan Rogue would have been $1,005, sorry, $1,005. And if we get down a little further, and these are smaller sedans that I wouldn't have picked, but if we get down to the Chevy Equinox, which is down here, that would have cost us about $1,139. Chevy Malibu is all the way back at the top. That was going to cost us uh, $771, way cheaper than the others. The problem is the cost of, of renting the Tesla versus renting a gas car is 
tremendous back then. So factored in the gas costs, factoring in the rental costs, it would have cost us $307 more. It actually cost us $307 more to rent the Tesla, even with the gas savings of $121. Nissan Rogue would have cost us $500 less almost, even with the gas savings. And the Chevy Malibu, $638 less than what it was with the Model Y. So huge cost difference. But again, you can see the Tesla was $609 per week versus some much, much lower cost. Now, I went out to the Hertz website today because that seemed extraordinarily high. And I think it's because they had just introduced it. It was a fad. People wanted to rent the Tesla, so they had the price set high. Looking today, if I were to rent a Model 3, it would only cost me $232 a week compared to a five passenger SU, media five passenger SUV, which is a Chevy Equinox, which is 278. So it actually costs less. Now, they don't have the Model Y listed here. Not sure how much the Model Y would have cost, but I'm thinking the price was way out of whack. So renting that car today versus a gas car, I think the gap would be a lot smaller. Now, gas is cheaper today, about a buck a gallon. So factoring that in, I think it would come close to a push. So interesting anyways, looking over all of that data, um, I was surprised how little it cost, uh, but then I was actually quite shocked that it wouldn't have cost a ton more for gas, but then we did save some money. We probably saved about a third of the cost. So let's talk about renting from Hertz. So um, it was a pretty easy experience. Um, as we initially came to the Hertz website. We picked the car, said we wanted to rent it. When we showed up, um, as you saw in the earlier video, it didn't show up at the Hertz Gold Board like it normally does, but it did show um, that we had a rental, so we had to wait for them to bring the car up. And when they brought the car up, the car only had 20% state of charge or somewhere near that. So it was pretty frustrating that they left the car so low. Um, they said we could leave it there and they would charge it up, but all they had there was a destination charger, uh, which was level two. And that wasn't going to be very good for us because uh, we didn't want to sit around and wait a couple hours for it to charge. So we looked and saw that there was a charger not that far away, a, a, destiny, a supercharger. So we elected to take the car and go supercharge it on our own. A um, couple other things about renting the car. Um, they, they seem to know a little bit about it but not a ton. Granted, this was a year ago and they had just started getting them in. But one really nice thing that they had was they had sent me a couple of emails. They actually showed me a lot of things about the car. So if you weren't used to driving a Tesla, we were. They gave you a lot of um, helpful little videos and information that you could use to learn how to drive a Tesla. So it wasn't like you had to figure it out on your own or, or just talk to the people there. And you can see it talks about things about the interior, how do you adjust your side mirrors, how to adjust your seats. So all that stuff was available to me in some emails I had received ahead of time, which was very helpful in being able to know how to drive the car if you had never driven a Tesla before. So um, I think nowadays they're a little bit more knowledgeable there and so they can help you a little more. But um, overall, they gave me the information ahead of time to figure that out. So in all in all, you know, if I could rent a car and I can rent a Tesla, I'd rather rent a Tesla. I love the fact that, it, oh, by the way, it didn't come with full self-driving, but it did come with Navigate on autopilot, which was great on the freeways. Um, I've got so used to driving with Navigate on autopilot on freeways with the car changing lanes for me, adaptive cruise control, lanes, lane centering. I've kind of got spoiled and I knew we were gonna be doing a lot of driving in Texas. So I'm glad it came with that. I believe they still come with that. Um, so looking back, I think I would have rented a Tesla again. Um, not only do I have a channel and I want to film stuff about it, but I just like driving a Tesla. I like the tech. Um, I like that we could keep the car running. It was a couple of days. If you go back and watch those videos, it was over 100 degrees outside. And being able to keep the temperature running at a cool temperature allowed us to not only keep our stuff in the car nice, but come back to the car and the car was cooled off. It wasn't hot. Um, so that... Coupled with the Navigator on autopilot, um, I would definitely look to get a Tesla um, when renting a car. Now, we've taken our son back to college a couple of times, and he goes to a small college in South Central Minneapolis. And while there are chart, sorry, South Central Minnesota, and while there are chargers in Minneapolis, there aren't any superchargers between Minneapolis and his town, and there's none in the town that he goes to school in. So we've elected to use a gas car on those trips because Quite frankly, I don't want to get stuck charging, stuck charging with level two only. Um, if there was any superchargers anywhere near, I probably would. Um, and again, I would factor in the cost. Um, you know, the I think more Hertz has more Hertz and other companies have EVs for rental, and the, the demand comes down. I think it'll be cheaper as it looks like it's becoming over this last year. So, so if you want to try out a Tesla and you want to try it for a week or maybe less, 
I encourage you to rent one from Hertz and try it out. It's a great way to get your feet wet to figure out, is this something I really want to have long term? Warning though, if you do rent uh, a Tesla you're, and you drive a Tesla for any amount of time, you're probably going to want to eventually get a Tesla because amazing car, amazing tech. They're just so much fun to drive. So that's all I got this week. I just wanted to kind of go over that again, show you the cost involved, show you how much the total trip cost and let you see how much did it really cost to drive an EV versus a gas vehicle for almost two weeks. So that's all I've got for this time. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions about the trip or about charging or about running from Hertz, leave a comment down below and I'll definitely get back to you. Um, or if you want to know more about what we did on the trip, I encourage you to go back and check those road trip videos out. There's about 12 of them. Uh, the whole road trip, you can see different videos where we went and how we charged and all that good stuff. So anyways, hope you liked this video. If you do, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.